Hello everyone. In the last lecture, we have seen the classic information retrieval model that is Boolean model. Today, we are going to learn vector model. So, learning outcome for this session is students will be able to create vector model and retrieve the documents for a given query using vector model. Now, in Boolean model, we have seen that there is no notion of partial matching or since the weights are binary, we are going to we are getting a result either relevant or non-relevant. So, that is giving you the too many documents or it is giving you the exact matching over there. So, how it can be uh, improved in this vector model? That is why the weights are considered as a non-binary weights and the positive weights. So, here the pair is k i and d j, it is nothing but the weight of keyword k i in document d j. So, all the index, all the weights that we are defining are non-binary in between 0 to 1. Also, we are going to assign the weights for the index terms in the query that is nothing but here w i q. So, weight of the keyword uh, k i with respect to query q which is also again greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 1. So, how it will be query vector? Weight of every term that is first term, second term up to assuming that there are t terms with respect to query and the vector for the document will be w 1 j, w 2 j up to w t j. It is nothing but the weight of all the t terms with respect to document j. Okay. So, in Boolean model we have seen that this weights will be either 1 or 0, but here since it is non-binary what is our task is that to find the weight vector based on the frequency or the occurrences. Now, we, what we have obtained down the two vectors, one is a document dj vector and the second one is user query vector in t dimensional space. So, what is the degree of similarity or which documents it will be retrieving? So, vector model proposes to evaluate the degree of similarity of document dj and query q as the correlation between these two vectors. As you can see there are two vectors, this is the dj vector and the q vector and this correlation will be given by the cosine of theta where theta is the angle in between these two. If you can simplify this, this dot product of the vectors which will be converted into terms of the weight vectors of document and query that we have entered. So, we can see that as the distance or the as the angle is less, then document is more similar. If the angle is increasing, document is not that much similar okay? because we are going for here of approximate matching and if exactly this q and document dj vector are same means they are exact similar. Okay? This is how we are going to calculate the degree of similarity of this document. So, you can consider this as a ranking function of a vector model. So, let us see how to create the weight vectors and then find the degree of similarity for the given query. So, here since the weights for both are varies from 0 to 1, we are going to get the degree of similarity also in between 0 to 1 and that is where we can call that the vector model ranks the documents according to the degree of similarity. So, some of the document may get the similarity as 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.5 and so on, okay, which is in between 0 to 1 and more is the value, more is the relevance over there and that is why we call, we can call it as a vector model partially match the documents and of course, we are going to define a threshold also. All, so, though the degree of similarity is 0 0.1, 0 0.21 and so on, which document should be taken into the result and which not, it depends on the threshold that has been set. So, for a given, so in this particular vector model while uh, defining the weights, we are going to consider the concept of clustering. So, what is that concept is that we have given one collection of the objects. So, let, let us look at this basket as a collection of objects or we can call it as in vegetables over there. So, a vague description of that object which we want to search is given and what is our goal? A simple clustering algorithm which will separate the collection into two sets. What will be that two sets? One set will composed of the objects related to set A and second will be composed of the object which are not related to set A. For example, here I am finding the uh, vegetables which are comparable to carrot. Okay. So, comparable to carrot means that either it can be the fruit vegetable or lengthwise. So, for example, this uh, uh, what you can say that this spinach or some leafy vegetables will not come into the category or what I am saying is that I want all the vegetables whose length is 
uh, similar to carrot something like that so this is a description that we i am giving of course when I mean, this is the onion that will be separated into the second set or but when we are looking for this some cucumber or this bottle gourd or something like that it will come into the category of the carrot so what we are finding is that we are finding some features which will be similar to carrot and some features which will not be similar to carrot and this is how two terms are going to be described so what are that two terms which is nothing but the intra cluster similarity and inter cluster dissimilarity now how this ir problem or the retrieval problem can be considered as a clustering problem so here we are given in collection of the objects is nothing but our documents or the collection a uh, text collection and our vague description is nothing but the query what you want to search that is nothing but your description of the object so what the ir problem can be reduced to is that finding the documents which are in the set a that means which are similar to the user query and which are not in the set a okay this is how we can find so as i am discussing about you what is the intra cluster similarity one needs to determine what are the features which will better describe the objects in set a so looking at the example of the carrot you can say that yes length should be this much then it should be that uh, elongated color if you are going for the color the color should be pinkish reddish and so on that way you can describe okay in that scenario uh, if you are not specifying the length over there so maybe some tomato will also come because it is in reddish okay but that cucumber uh, that onion if it is in reddish it will come but if you are describing based on the length then it will not come so you have to decide some features which will exactly describe that uh, object which is called as an intra cluster similarity so all those objects will be in set a will have the same features or the properties whereas all the objects which are not present in a will not have the same properties it is called as inter cluster dissimilarity so two clusters are there one cluster is having all the similarity in between them but if you are going to check the similarity in between the one cluster and the other cluster this is different this is called as an inter cluster dissimilarity now how to use this in ir so intra cluster similarity is quantified by measuring the raw frequency of every term inside the document dj this is called as a term factor okay so one has to provide how how well that term describes a document see if a particular document is there how you are going to identify that this document tells about this so if a index term is describing that document it is occurring it is going to occur more times okay this is how we can define the raw frequency whereas an inter cluster dissimilarity means it is going to measure the inverse of the frequency term among the documents in the collection so in how many documents it is present out of the collection if we take its inverse it will give you inter cluster similarity so for example out of 10 my keyword is occurring in 7 so in 3 it is not occurring that is nothing but here inter cluster dissimilarity so how to uh, calculate this weight vectors so n is the total number of documents in the system ni is the number of documents in which index term ki is appearing frequency ij is in raw frequency of term ki with respect to document dj and normalized frequency so we are normalizing it in between 0 to 1 so how to normalize it find the maximum frequency and divide it for the all the raw frequencies that is nothing but normalization inverse frequency as we uh, we have discussed right now in ni is the number of documents in which ki ki keyword is present so if you take the inverse that log of n divided by ni it will give you inverse document frequency and once you have identified the term frequency and inverse document frequency there are multiple schemes for this weighting one of them is this tf idf scheme so normalized frequency multiplied by this idf will give you the weight vectors so this is how we and once we have created weight vectors for the document in the same manner we can create it for the queries and then we can find degree of similarity yeah this is the formula for the query vectors because this 0.5 term has been entered because it may happen that only few words with only one of the occurrences can occur and that's how we can create the word, uh, weight vectors for the queries now let us look at the example so these are the three uh, text documents that we have taken now ni 
so yeah of course these are the number of documents in which the keyword is present so first see which are the uh, frequent uh, sorry index terms that we have taken so these are the six index terms that we have identified from this collection uh, for finding the index term again you can refer the video of creation of logical documents so raw frequency how many times this keyword has been occurred in the first document okay so if you can see this mount is occurred twice that is why the raw frequency is 2, Everest is also occurred twice or one time, mountain one time and these are not present that is why 0. So, out of this maximum is 2. Again we have found a raw frequency for the keywords in the second document. So, mountain, kalsubai, these are the two keywords which are present that is why the maximum is again 2 out of this is 2 and then in the third document, mount, mountain and fuji is occurring. So, maximum is 1. So, this is how raw frequency and maximum has been found. For normalized frequency, divide this raw frequency by this maximum and this we are getting it as a raw uh, normalized frequency which is nothing but F i j. Okay? After that, this is the NR number of documents in which this keyword is present that we have identified and then we are going for inverse document frequency. How we have found the inverse document frequency? It is log of n. In our case n is 3. So, 3 divided by 2 it is 1.5 and its log value is going to be 0 0.176. In the same manner we have calculated inverse document frequency. So, once we have identified this IDFI and FIJ, let us calculate the weight vectors. So, at this moment you can pause the video and try to find out the weight vectors. Yeah, it is a multiplication of Fij into IDFI and how many weight vectors we will obtain? 3 weight vectors. So, W uh, that is D1, D2 and D3. So, 0.176 multiplied by this particular weight that is 1 and so on. This is how we have got this weight vectors. In the same manner, we have to calculate the raw frequency for this query. So, as, assume that our query is Mount Kalsubai where mount and this kalsubai is occurring only one remaining are 0 and only one time. If it is occurring more than one time, you can give two, threes as many as occurring. Maximum is 1, that is why the raw frequency and normalized frequency will be same. IDF factor will be same as we have calculated for the document and then we can go for calculation of this weight vector for query. And once we have calculated this weight vector and query vector, uh, weight vectors for the document and query, we can calculate a degree of similarity. If you remember the formula, it is the weights which are present in the query. So, the weight of the mount and weight of the mount in document and query, whereas the second uh, keyword is Kalsubai which is not present, that is why it is 0. Divided by the square root of squares of summation of all the uh, weights of the keywords in the first document and weights in the query. So, this part will be common everywhere only this part is changing. So, after calculation we have got a degree of similarity is like this 0 0.14, 0 0.91 and 0.16. So, the most relevant document is 0 0.91 that is D2. So, ranking how we will be doing D2, D3 and then D1. Here we are not considered threshold, but this is how we can rank the document. So, we have to calculate this degree of similarity for every document. So, what are its advantage? So, of course, this perf it is improving the retrieval performance because there is a partial matching. So, partial matching strategy is allowed which is uh, of the documents that approximate the query condition. So, this cosine formula gives you the sorting of the docu documents according to the degree of similarity. But what is the disadvantage here? Index terms are assumed to be mutually independent. We have not considered any dependency of the keywords right now. So, this is how vector model works. Thank you.